Alrighty y'all, welcome to Ellis Mowers. Before I get into the snapper rear engine rider video, this is my personal one um, that y'all saw a couple videos back. Um, I mentioned something about it running fast and governor and stuff like that. I wanted to get it, get this out of the way before the video started because I know I might get some comments about the governor. Um, I was just being very dumb and didn't even think about adjusting the governor on it. So... I don't know, like I said, I don't know if the governor went out in the motor or if I simply just needed to adjust the governor on the side. This is uh, this is not the mower that I needed to work on, but it's a very similar one, just 25 plus years newer. I wanted to get that out of the way just to clarify. Um, I probably should have adjusted the governor on it before I sold it. However, I sold it, got a trade in. I actually got right there. And uh, the guy seems pretty happy with it. He's already painted it and everything to make it look um, a lot nicer than even when I sold it. And it was in nice condition when I sold it. So just wanted to get that out of the way before we get started on this video. And you'll see me working on uh, this snapper here in just a second. Enjoy. <laughs> Alrighty y'all, welcome to Ellis Mowers. We have another project here that we're working on, another riding mower. Uh, I've already kind of delved into it a little bit. Um, I had a, a couple people come by a couple of things, so I just kind of fiddled around with it until uh, before they all left and everything. So I've done a couple of things to it so far. I wanted to give you a, a kind of a lowdown of what's going on here. It's a snapper high vac. It's almost exactly like the the other snapper that I showed you a couple videos back, um, it is a, tw I believe this one's a 28. Um, this one is made in 1981. I think the sticker on the side confirms this. I actually do not know how to read a snapper sticker, but there's their, there's your number, 23042752. The model is a 28083S which I would presume is a 28 inch cut, eight horsepower. 3S is probably something with the uh, transmission or something like that would be my guess. Um, or it could be something different. Um, whoever knows potentially the difference, just let me know. I'd love, love to know how to decipher, especially those snappers. But I can verify that this eight horsepower was made in 81. It's a 190707, as 810818 is the numbers. I know it's very hard to see on the, uh, on this. To be almost 40 years old, it's in pretty good shape, all things considering. Obviously, the thing hasn't been washed in forever. We've got the classic loose muffler. We can attempt to tighten that up some or we could just run on a straight pipe that'd be kind of fun <laughs> um if i can get this thing going i've already got a buyer for it um i know it starts and i know it'll run on starter fluid but the carburetor i've already taken the carb bowl off as you can see it is bad it's really really bad um a lot of rust in there because the gas cap has been broken and has gotten a lot of water into it. Just water just running straight into the gas can there, or the gas. Um, pull rope is broken on it. I think the pull rope recoil still works though. Let's see. I feel a little bit of recoil action going on it, so. We'll have to see if that works or not. Let's see. Let me get down here and see. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. It might be an electric start only here. Um, the electric start works great on it, though. 
so not terribly worried about that. Um, the throttle's bad. Throttle cable's bad on it, just exactly like the other two that I have had. Um, but let me see if I get some starter fluid here. I can show you that it at least kicks over, I think. Let me see if I can, and of course it runs out right there, but. So it runs good, it's a little low on oil. I have to change the oil in it. But, and I don't know if this pull rope can be saved. I'll have to take the, the engine cover off to see if I can save the pull rope on it, because it's not like the new style where I took a couple of 5 sixteenths and got it off. Um, I got the carb out of it already, uh, the carb bowl off of it, as you can see right there. Now I'm going to take the the screws off of the carb, and we're going to take a look under it, because I think I got a main jet clog. It was not leaking gas, which is a good thing, um, and the fuel line was intact. I've already cut the fuel line and, uh, like I said, taken it off. Um, I think it's just got some old gas in it. We'll just have to get a, give this thing a good old cleaning, I think. And I think we can get it back on. So, let me go ahead. All I got to do is take off these two intake bolts. And then I will take off... I just have to take the linkages off. I'll show you how to put them on back on. The choke linkage right here. And the... Um, throttle linkage as you can see so let me go ahead and do that uh, worst case I buy another carburetor for it I've done one already um, it worked well it just took a while for it to come in and I'd like to get this thing out within the week honestly so uh, let me see what we got and uh, I'll get back up with y'all after I get this carburetor off and get it on the bench so before I started working on it I just wanted to show you how bad it is look at this bowl Just a bunch of crust and stuff on it, like a ton, just from water and condensation and stuff. It almost sounds like there's moisture in it too, which is not a good thing. Um, which would cause it to leak. Well, if I save the other float from the other carburetor, I think I chucked it. Uh, I don't know. I might put it back together just to see what the heck happens. You never know until you try. Um, I think I got a blockage in the needle there. And then... Let's see. And then all that stuff down there. I don't know if the light can show it as well. But all that mess right there. So I'm just going to get to work. Blow it out. See what we got. If we have a good carburetor here. If I've got to order another one. We'll find out. And I'll catch back up with you all in just a second. So put everything back on the carburetor here. Um, and sprayed it out. I've got everything going through the jets like it should be from what I can tell. Um, I don't know if this floats good or not. We're going to find out. But I'm going to put all the carb, the bowl back on. And this back on. And then I'll join y'all over here. I'll tighten that up with a half inch wrench. I'll join y'all over here at the mower and we'll put the, uh, We'll put some different fuel line on it, and we'll also put the carburetor back on here to see if we can get it to, to run properly. All right, so we're going to put the carburetor back on. It's not terribly difficult. you got your throttle arm and your choke arm. They kind of go in the same way. Choke arm goes in the back here. We can put that in. And your throttle arm goes in the front. A 
with the spring. And you just pop the two bolts back on. Super easy. Just that sometimes the access on these older snappers is a little more difficult than say your average lawn tractor that these engines come on, but this is an eight horse instead of an eleven horse like I've got like I've had on the other two. I don't think I've ever had a snapper with an eight horsepower on it before, so this is a different this is different than what I'm used to. Um, and then also had a 5 16 inch bolt that kept the back of the carburetor in place. I'm really hoping this thing doesn't leak. It wasn't it wasn't leaking anything before. It doesn't mean to say that it's going to leak now, but we'll find out. I'm just going to, let's see, i got the screwdriver here, I'll go ahead and tighten these bolts up. I'll get over here so y'all can see a little better. So one thing I will have to do, I think, unless I've got enough on this gas tank here in order to get it down there. Is put some more gas line on it. Now I've actually got enough here to fit it back on for right now. We're just gonna test it out. I really just want to put a tiny bit of gas in it. I don't know if I showed you what came out of the tank, but that is basically water, so it was never going to run on that. And so let me get some gas in it, and we'll see if it'll crank up for us and run on its own. Okay, y'all, so I've got gas in it. It doesn't look like it's leaking, but hopefully it's getting gas down to it. I see a little bit of... I don't think it's leaking, I just think it leaked down the tank after I had a little bit of spillage. So, let's, just for kicks, let's see what happens when I choke it. does run I want to throttle it down a little bit and the, the problem I have is I don't have the proper way to like I don't think I'm leaking any gas or anything which is good 
I don't have a throttle cable and I can't figure out to save my life how to put a good throttle cable on it that bends around and flexes and won't break off of it. So that's that's my struggle. I'm gonna fix this thing at a set throttle and I'll show the guy how to run it and everything. Um, but I can get, cause I know what I'm getting on trade. I'm getting a push mower that I sold him for $80. Plus, I'm getting them a, I'm, I'm getting a, um, Murray 30-inch lawnmower that has a bad transaxle from what he says. And so, runs, let me adjust the throttle on it and throttle it down just a smidge. I'll go ahead and put the air filter back on it, and we will, uh, we'll drive it around the yard. We'll go for a nice little test drive, and then... Like I said, the belt and everything looks good on it, considering how old it is. Looks like it's nice and sturdy. We'll make sure that it drives, and then we will uh, continue on here. All right, so I got it throttled down a little bit. I know these things are supposed to run at 3,600 RPM. That is a lot of RPMs, and also, but I know that's the way they're supposed to run. Also. I uh, don't, or the muffler is kind of loose on it, so I need to tighten the muffler on it. Forgot to tell you how much I paid for this thing. I paid 50 bucks for it from the guy that lives right down the street. He goes and sources lawnmowers. Basically picks them up for free or next to nothing. And then he makes a little bit of cash off of it. I don't have to do any of the sourcing, which for me is perfectly fine, because that means I can spend more time working on stuff. Yeah, I'll get that screw down here in just a second. Let me find a screwdriver. Well, let's actually take a walk together, why don't we? So that was screwdriver right here. We'll screw it in. I don't have any leaks in the tank, which is awesome. I don't have any leaks in the car, which is even more awesome. This long bolt is actually really tricky to get in, it seems. See if I can get this long bolt in. Well, it goes in somehow, some way. We'll get it in there. But for now, how about we just see if we'll crank up and take a ride? Let me give it a little choke. Let's push y'all to start with the camera. Tell me this. Tell me how it started up just fine just a second ago. And now it won't even hit a lick. It's always the question of the hour, huh? Might have been stuck on the choke. Let's see. Let's see if I'll start now. Oh. Gets me every time.
thing really just seems like it's running on the fast side. I wonder if the throttle linkage even works on this thing. Like the governor, the governor seems to be working. I don't see any leaks coming anywhere. I just see a little bit of oil from where the old the old one or the old oil has been building up over time. It doesn't have any blow by from what I can tell. I wish I had a well, I, did, I have a way to check it. I do have a way to check RPMs, actually. And I need to take the cover off of it anyways. I've got one of these old school RPM gauges right here. I wonder, 300 to 5,000. We've got like three different settings on this thing, it looks like. Old school tech. Three thousand to fifty thousand. Wow. It used to be used by family on go karts. Here's what I'm going to do I'm going to take the four seven sixteenths bolts off. I'm going to crank it up, let it run, see how it runs. I mean, obviously, we know it runs pretty fast. We're going to see how fast it really is running, though. All right, so I, I did a lot of videoing of me adjusting the governor, trying to mess with it. But I didn't want to waste y'all's time with with me going back and forth. It's like pull it out, push it in, pull it out, push the spring in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let me show you what I did to get it better. It looks like I did push the spring in some over here, and I just used a flathead screwdriver to do it. It seems like it worked okay. Y'all be able to hear it running here in a minute. I'm gonna go give it a wash and also put the pull rope on it just for kicks if you need to pull it you know and i aired the tires up so it wants to roll away on me now let me put the clutch in put it in here I'll put it in the park oh wait it doesn't go anywhere okay so i've got that going um it's a good thing i put a i got a right side terminal uh a right positive battery because that's the battery that this one takes um and the other one was stone dead i mean it won't there won't no life left in it so I got this pull rope fixed. That's easy. All I had to do was take the cover off. You've seen me do it many a times. It's just a little bit different variant on this older Magnetron. Uh, I just clamp it with vice grips versus uh, throwing a screwdriver in it because there's no holes in the top for cooling, I guess, or for uh, decoration, whatever it is. I'm going to go ahead and put new... Well, the fuel line's good on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shutoff valve on it. This thing is set overnight, and it has not leaked a drop from the carburetor. And uh, what I want, what I'm going to do, because I want to, I want it to go either today or tomorrow, is I'm going to wash it first. And after I wash it, I'm going to cold start it. Um, and and I'll have to change the oil, and I'm going to sharpen the blade on it as well. Um, but you can tip these mowers up on the rear, which most of y'all know. You just hit on those mountain points. You can also put a bagger on the back of these. Um, so that's what I did. I didn't want to bore you with a bunch of just me going back and forth as to, is this really how I need to do this or not, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I did. I found a, a new fuel cap for it, put a new fuel cap on it. Um... anything else I did apart from cleaning the carburetor and putting a battery in it so far I have not I did raise the deck that what the chain was on the very bottom rung I did raise it because it was sitting like a um, 
like the Carolina squat is like what we call it down here when a truck sits like this in the front and then in the back is sitting way down. It was sitting down further in the back than on the front, so I didn't want to catch it on poles and stuff for the new owner, so I moved up. I know I can screw these up some, but I just moved it up one chain rung on the uh, adjuster there, and that also does the trick. Um, I'm, the more I look at this thing, because you see spray paint right there, the more I look at this thing, the more I think that this lawnmower has been, has a new deck on it. Now, that blade is pretty sharp, all things considering. It's got rock chips and stuff in it, but it's the, um, it's the 28 inch blade. I might just hit it, quickly hit it with a file and file up the top a little bit and uh, might not even worry about taking it off because it cuts great. I, I cut a little patch over there yesterday. It's cutting great. All the tires have tubes in them already, so I just pumped them up. I should be good. These muffler bolts are pretty rusted and um, ragged out on it. This muffler is basically shot. I don't even know if I'm going to worry about the muffler, truthfully. Um, the, it's not loud when you're cutting the grass. It's just loud when you have it on. And I think the governor spring is a little weak on it, or something in the governor is worn because... It'll run pretty fast whenever there's no load on the engine. But it runs perfectly whenever you have the blades on. It doesn't sound like it's struggling for power either. So that, may, that makes me think that everything's good except for the fact that the governor's spring might be a little weak on it. Um, so what I'm going to do, pending any rain, I'm going to pop in the backyard here. I've cut grass so much lately, I don't really need to cut grass, but I want to give this thing a good test before I send it off, hopefully either later in the day today or tomorrow, whichever one, um, depending on how quickly I get this thing done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash it, change the oil in it, do a little file on the blaze just to get the edge of it a little bit sharper and uh, run around with it and see what we got. Okay, also we've got it cleaned up. As you can see, it's still a little bit on the wet side but it cleaned up all I did is spray purple power on it and then I just wash it down with a hose um, sometimes a pressure wash things it just depends on if I got the pressure washer out but we have the that's just water I'm just confirming that that's water down there and it is I did a bunch of washing around the engine and stuff because there was a bunch of oil around it I've also changed the oil in it so what I'm going to do, this is the way I like to see if I really want to start up because I don't, if I got some water in the, the bowl or whatever, then I want to know. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get this thing started here. And what I've got to do, the throttle is in a fixed position, but all I got to do is like pull the choke back a little bit, which is right here while I am cranking it. So it's really not that bad, and as soon as it hits, you just let let off the choke and it rolls on with it. So again, I can't I can't for the for to save my life try and figure out how to do one of them throttle cables where they won't break like that. Because I've had I'm three for three on broken throttle cables or snappers. So
plug, so that's no big deal. Well, yeah, we got some water on the plug. Let me clean the plug off real quick. That should solve our issue because I can hear it trying to pop, 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 pop. I didn't have the switch on at first. This is a common issue whenever I work on these things is that I get a little bit of water on the plug when I wash them. Usually you're supposed to let them dry a little bit. We're going to see if this one will work though without me having to wait for it to dry. So let me set, set y'all down. I think I might have a little bit of water in the bowl as well. So let me, man, I wish it would just. Because it's trying to, it's really trying to hit, but it's just not, it's just not firing. So let me blow off some of this, see if we can get some good spark out of this thing. a good spot on the plug. Let's see if I can get it on without having to turn it off. Oh, it's running away from me. Yeah, that's it. So, the, this is just wet on the plug. So, as soon as I hit it, Right there on the back side of the plug, it gets wet. I, let's let that dry. We know it runs. Uh, I might try and dry that off with some air. And uh, once I get that dried off, I'm going to test mow it. Once I test mow with it. And you can hear it running. As, you can hear how it's running as well. It's running a lot better. Um, I'll make sure the battery is decently charged also. And... Uh, We will uh, continue on here. Um, it does have a coil stator wire right here out of it that's running over to the ignition. So hopefully the battery is charging. After I run it for about 15, 20 minutes, it will. That's all it is. I just need to run it. i just see if I can run it like it is right there. And then I'll pop the plug on after I run it a little bit and see how it is. But it wasn't smoking. Let's see if it cranks back up for us. Oh, I see what it's doing. It's trying to ground out. Aha. It's trying to ground out on this bolt right here. So, I don't know if you can see when I did that. I bet it'll crank now. exactly what it's doing that is exactly what it's doing let me get some electrical tape pop it around that because there's a little water in it I'm gonna grab a little electrical tape pop it around that boot so that it doesn't ground out right there on the the bolt and we'll be in great shape but y'all can hear it run let me cut with it y'all hear it's running a lot a lot quieter and a lot slower so let me grab a little electrical tape pop that on there we'll cut the grass I'll give you all a final look and start it up Nice old 1981 snapper. Alright, so here, I haven't blown it off yet, but here, I mean, I washed it 
Um, I've cut grass with it some, and it seems to be doing okay. So, um, I'm glad to see that. Um, Y'all hear it run. I've had to... So, these old carbs have an adjustment on the bottom part down here. I've had to adjust the screw a little bit while, I'm, while it's been running. Seems like the air fuel mix gets a little off here and there. Um, my little electrical tape is holding up perfectly. Uh, I cut probably for good... I cut my whole back here, which is probably a good 15 to 20 minutes. Maybe even more than that. And everything seems to be holding up okay. Um, it'll even... Might even pull start for us, but what I'm going to have to do is I'll set y'all down. We'll, uh, we'll watch or we'll crank it up and we will, uh, see what we have going on. As you can see, I got many other mower projects here in the, the garage ready and waiting to go. Um, and another one finished right there, which y'all should be seeing in a very, in a video very, very soon. So, let me crank it back up. We won't struggle this time, I'm fairly confident. Like I mentioned, I actually mentioned to um, mentioned on Facebook or on Instagram, excuse me, run a little fast whenever there's no blades on, especially after you turn them off. Um, on initial startup, it seems like it's running pretty good. 
and I'll show you, I can even pull start it. But these, I think these are designed to run a little bit at a higher RPM than a lot of the new stuff anyways. And also the fact that the muffler's smaller and things like that help contribute to it. I agree that it's running a little bit on the fast side. I have done everything in my power in terms of Governor Springs and all that to get it to where it does not run at, um, at a higher RPM. But... Like I said, I think I got a little bit of a governor issue on it. The thing cuts fine. Um, as you can see, I've cut cut some of the yard with it. Cut some in the back back there. I wanted to run it a solid 15 to 20 minutes before I called it good. I feel like it is good to go now. It is cranking, starting, and running great. Um, except for it being a little on the fast side, which I'm very well aware of. I don't, I don't. Uh, I don't really need to hear that in the comments, so because <laughs> I know I'm gonna get a few comments. It's like it's running too fast. It's running too fast. I'm aware it is running a little on the fast side. The thing is, you heard it with the blades on. I've done everything that I can do with this governor spring. Once these motors get a little tired and old, there's gonna be some governor parts that are gonna wear on them, and they're not gonna run exactly like they used to be, or that like they used to. So. Now that I'm done with that, <laughs> um, I'll ask you what y'all think of these things. This is the second one I've gotten in two weeks, and the fourth one I've ever had, or fifth one, excuse me, that I've ever had. So here's the one I'm keeping. This is my beautiful 11 horsepower 2007 model, which is basically the same thing as what I got out there, except 20 six years newer so the old bagger fits on it and everything so just wanted to show you all that too and uh so the specifics on this i paid fifty dollars for it i'm probably going to get the equivalent in trades of maybe two hundred dollars for it brand new battery this one's got electric start on it the one i have doesn't even have electric start on it got the electric and the pull start working New oil, file down the blade a little bit, make it a little sharper. Um, seems to be cutting fine though. Y'all saw how much, y'all saw how much it was blowing the, the um, rot or the, the stuff off the driveway. So it's it's got good good power, and good, um, good vacuum so to speak, good lift. So, apart from the thing running a little fast when it's idling with no load on it. This thing is a pretty stout mower. It's even got a little beverage holder that you, if you want a, you know, beverage of your choice on it. Um, the seat is up a little bit. You can you can take the seat off and adjust it further back. But I'm only about five foot seven, so that's perfect for me. Um, all the tires already have tubes in them. They hold air. Like I said, I think the I think the deck has either been refurbished or has been replaced on it because it's in very 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 good shape to be almost 40 years old um the whole mower is but anyways i just want to show you that it's done um a nice little one part riding mower video for you a nice little snapper this thing will pop wheelies like there's no tomorrow too <laughs> i'm not going to do that because i don't want to be damaging the bearings on the wheels too bad because i already had one that had the same fate back there um shut off switch i put on here new battery so the battery between the battery and the new oil and the 50 bucks i've got maybe 80 dollars in the mower like i said it's not too much more than about a 200 dollar mower but the thing is the guy i'm going to sell it to is giving me an 80 dollar push mower that i sold him a while back and is giving me a hundred and or a, a, a riding mower little rear engine riding mower so uh you know a quick flip couple days on this one in out 
gone, done. Um, even if the buyer doesn't come through, it's a $200 mower. So make a, you know, a little bit of money off of it. Um, go on to the next project. Again, like I said, you'll probably see this Yardman push mower coming up because I'm almost done with that. The Husqvarna in the back. I think, I'm think i thinking about tackling these two Kohler Courages that I've got next because they're nice mowers for what they are. It's just they got the Kohler Courage engine in them that leaks oil like everything. So we'll see if we can get that. We'll see if we can get these Kohlers fixed. If not, um... Gosh, it could be the Black Murray, it could be the John Deere, it could be this great craftsman, or it could be something that my um, uh, guy that sources mowers could bring. So, I got a lot coming down the pike, y'all. A lot. So, I appreciate y'all watching as always. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at LSMowers09 got some real time updates for you there that's what i'm working on but for now i'll catch you all in the next video and we'll see you then